Hi dog lovers! This video is called Where to Find a Puppy and this is part two of things to consider when looking for a new dog. Um, part one is about whether it's right for you to adopt a dog from a shelter or find a dog from a breeder and um, if you didn't catch it on my first video um, I'll give you a short introduction of what motivated me to create these videos. So I have an Instagram page that I started in 2017 starring my two and a half pound Yorkie Teddy. His Instagram was named Teddy Goes Places because he went everywhere with me. And um, he reached almost 20,000 followers in one year and about a year after I started it, um, he was killed by another dog. I continued his page with the name Teddy Bear Yorkies and the questions that I get asked most are, are you a breeder? Or who is your breeder? Or where can I find a puppy? So even though this video is for Teddy Yorkie fans, um, some of this information can also be applied to searching for puppies of any breed. I realize that getting a dog from a breeder can be a pretty controversial subject because there are so many innocent dogs in shelters who need a home. Um, and I have a lot of thoughts on the subject and that's why I created um, part one of this video called Where to Find a Dog, Adopt or Shop. So if you're feeling upset by people who get dogs from a breeder or if you're on the fence about which is right for you, then watch that first video and I, um, I'll attach a link below. Aww. By the way, the content of any of my videos um, are just my opinion and so take it for whatever it's worth to you. What I do know for sure is um, that buying an expensive dog from a breeder doesn't guarantee the long-term health or look of a dog, but I will say that I believe that your chances of getting a well-adjusted, healthy dog with the attributes that you want are greater if you do your research and find a reputable breeder that you trust. But again, don't misunderstand me because I'm not saying that it isn't possible to get everything you want from a dog at a shelter. It is possible, but it all depends on what it is that you're looking for. No matter where you decide to get your next dog, um, I think that the most important question to ask yourself is, what's my commitment level? Before you bring a new family member into your home, you and your family might want to consider three things. One, the cost of a dog, not just initially, but also long term. Two, how much time do you have for training? And number three, any health issues. Consider um, not only the health of the dog, but also your own health and um, the type of dog that will be best suited for you. So if your needs, desires, and commitment level match up with looking at a shelter dog, then there are several sites to help point you in the right direction to begin your search. Um, start by searching the words, where to adopt a dog near me, and it might take a little time and patience until you find your dog, but the wait could be worth it. If your budget, desires, and commitment level match up with looking um, at a dog from a breeder, then there are some things to be aware of in order to find a reputable breeder that meets your needs. So in this video, I'm going to share my experiences in finding the breeders that I've worked with and hopefully that will help you in your search. It's a different world out there and because of the internet, it's possible to be able to get a puppy from farther away, even sometimes halfway around the world. And a lot of breeders are willing to put their puppies on a plane to be shipped to their future home. They'll usually do this for an added fee. And the only reason that I think this would be a good idea though, is if the breeder hires a pet nanny to fly with the puppy. I personally don't think it's a great idea to put the puppy's health and safety at risk by sending him alone in the cargo of a plane. Um, I'm sure that some breeders might disagree with me and say that they've never had a problem. But um, I'm a flight attendant and even though the airlines do everything that they can to be sure that the pets travel in cargo um, are safe, I still wouldn't do it with my puppies because even though they arrive safely, I think it's already scary enough for the puppy to deal with the potentially traumatizing journey of leaving their first home and going to their new home. Um, but Again, that's just my opinion. If you are looking at distant breeders, be very cautious of all the scams out there. 
Um, I'll put some links below to help you know what to look out for so that you don't become a victim to these scammers who put stolen pictures of someone else's adorable puppies in order to get your attention. And then they reel you in by asking you all the right questions to determine if you're going to be a good owner. You can always search the words um, Yorkie puppies scam or scam puppies for sale and several sites will come up so that you can educate yourself on that. So there are not only plenty of scammers out there, but there are also really bad breeders who give good breeders a bad name. I've talked to many breeders over the years, and it's just as important for you to carefully interview them as it is for them to interview you. It's definitely an advantage to look locally so that you can meet the breeder in person, meet the puppies and parents, and see firsthand what kind of conditions your puppy will be in for the first few months of life. As some of you know, I have three Yorkshire Terriers. My oldest daughter um, has always been allergic to dogs and after doing some testing with a few of our friends dogs, we found out that our daughter didn't have a reaction to Yorkies. And that was about 12 years ago. I ended up finding Teddy who was two and a half pounds full grown and um, he had the biggest personality uh, packed into the tiniest body I had ever seen in a dog and we were in love from the start. I found Teddy from a breeder who was five hours away from us on the opposite side of our state and that breeder retired about eight or nine years ago. I had talked to several breeders before I found Debbie and she was the first person I connected with because she took the time to answer my questions without sounding annoyed. Anyway, even though she was quite a distance from us, she was willing to have us come out to her place to meet the parents and see where she raises her puppies and she was really open and willing to send me pictures and I really always appreciated her for being available and easy to talk with. So just an interesting side note, when Debbie retired, she decided to rehome Teddy's dad, Murphy, and since my neighbor was one of Teddy's very first fans, she ended up adopting his dad. My neighbor ended up getting him fixed because um, he was a little bit older when she adopted him and um, Murphy actually just passed away last year at age 16, and we really miss him. So my Teddy was a stud dog too, um, but since he was so tiny and about half the size of his girlfriends, he appreciated our assistance. So even though my husband and I weren't um, breeders ourselves, we did have the experience of helping Teddy sire some litters and that's a whole story in itself. We got to keep one of Teddy's puppies and Bear is eight years old now. Here's Bear and um, his breeder is in Washington but his mom is retired from breeding and um, I wanted to keep two more of Teddy's puppies and I had planned to do that in a year or two but um, Teddy was killed before I got a chance to do that. So when I decided that we were ready for puppies, uh, I started talking to breeders again and I knew I wanted a boy and a girl, not necessarily to breed them, but since we had never had a girl, um, I decided that I wanted one of each and I didn't know if they would be from the same litter or from two different litters, maybe even from two different breeders. So I not only looked locally, but since I'm a flight attendant, I started looking literally all over the world. I didn't want them transported, I knew that, so I figured I would just fly to wherever I needed to go to pick them up. So I started interviewing breeders again, and I talked with a lot of them, and there was one particular lady in Canada who had the cutest pictures of puppies and their parents and I got totally suckered in by the pictures and the pictures of the parents too. And um, even though I knew it was a huge red flag that she would hardly give me the time of day, um, I was asking her about the puppy's parents and she said that she couldn't send me pictures or really answer any questions until I gave her a $500 deposit for the intent to buy a puppy from her. 
Um, and I love the pictures so much that um, I actually paid her the $500 deposit. But then even after that, um, she kept telling me how busy she was and said that she frankly didn't have the time to be taking pictures. And she said, besides, it's stressful for the puppies to be photographed. If that's true, then my dogs must be pretty stressed out because I take pictures of them all the time. But I will say though that I do see some pictures and videos of dogs that I feel bad for because I see them shaking in videos, all dressed up in a teacup or whatever and being handled like merchandise. And if that's the way you take pictures of them, then yes, I'd agree it's probably pretty stressful for the puppies. But I personally like to take pictures of my dogs mostly just being their little doggy selves, just doing what they have fun doing. Anyway, in the case with this lady, she was extremely unavailable and I knew that the negative reviews from several people on the internet were also a red flag. But since she had some good reviews too, I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. But my gut feeling was that this was the type of person that I shouldn't be working with, um, but I ignored it because of those cute pictures. After several weeks of her being so unavailable, I ended up deciding not to get a dog from her. So learn a lesson from my mistake and don't just fall for a few cute pictures. I was really careful to avoid the obvious scams um, that I knew about. But I, again, found myself being tempted by a company that um, advertises absolutely adorable pictures and videos. And I'm not mentioning names on purpose, but there's one company that sells puppies that are shipped from Korea and they are ridiculously cute and expensive. And the lady I talked to, um, who's the broker here in the US, she was really nice to talk with. Um, but the main problem I had with this company was that um, I couldn't even see pictures or know anything about the puppy's parents. Um, they don't work that way and I finally decided that for me it's best to visit the breeder and see the puppies in person. And if you can't see the puppy's parents in person, you know, I think that you should at least be able to see pictures or videos of the parents, be able to ask questions about the parents and their genetic background. I just think that that's super important. So there are several questions that I ask breeders and as I talk with them, um, it gives me an idea of how they raise their puppies. And if you're talking to a broker, you're just too far removed, I think, from how your future pet was born and raised. So, I'd like to introduce you to Baby and Bo. First Baby, she's my little girl. I just got her up from a nap. I'm sorry, Baby. So, um, she's our youngest and she's the last one that I got. First, I found Bo. So, this is Bo. I just got him up from a nap. Were you sleepy? It was about a year and a half ago that I started looking for them and it took me several months as I talked to a lot of breeders and they all had very different experiences and personalities and some of them I either didn't gel with or agree with particular things or maybe I didn't like the look of their dogs. Um, there were some that I really did connect with and I like the look of their dogs and to be honest with you if my husband didn't hold me back I, I might be um, one of those crazy Yorkie moms that has, well I'm already a crazy Yorkie mom with three but I might have ten Yorkies running around right now. But since I already have my puppies I'm here to help you find yours. So I wrote up a list of questions that I usually ask a breeder. Number one, what do you know about the family history of a pup? Number two, is it possible to meet the puppy's parents or at least see photos if you're long distance? A good general rule is that if you like the look of the parents, um, like the ears, hair, coat, color, body type, and size, your puppy will most likely grow up to look a lot like them. Number three, what are the conditions of your home and where is the puppy raised? 
I think that a good breeder should be open to inviting you over to visit in person and if you aren't able to visit in person then it speaks volumes to me if they're willing to at least FaceTime you or if they can send you a video or two um, of the place where your puppy will start his life. Number four, will the puppy have um, some socialization with other pets and people? The first few weeks of life is going to have an impact on your pet and it's important to know who your puppy will be interacting with. Number five, what is your policy on vaccination and deworming? As you hear the opinions of breeders, also do your own research on this and decide what your own opinions are. Um, choose a breeder who gels with what you think or who's at least respectful of your decisions and your, your choices in that area. Number six, have any of the puppies in the litter been sick? And number seven, do you have a health guarantee? Number eight, what do you feed your puppies? Now this is a question that I get a lot um, on Teddy Bear Yorkie's Instagram and I'm going to make a video on what I feed my dogs but for now I'll just say that um, I personally like to feed my dogs real whole food um, that I cook at home myself. I'll supplement them with a raw dry dog food called Stella and Chewy. Um, I don't collaborate with that company, although I probably should. And I know that there are a lot of other dog food companies out there. Um, there are probably some really other really good ones. But um, to be honest, I'd actually prefer not to feed my dogs any processed food at all. Um, anyway, when you're talking with a breeder, it's good to know what their thoughts are on um, what they feed their dogs. Number nine, what is the parent's size and weight? So you can look up um, akc.org to find out the standard features of each breed of dog. And as for weight with a Yorkie, for example, um, the breed standard is four to seven pounds. Um, all three of my Yorkies actually fall into the breed standard, um, but my Teddy was unusually small. Um, he weighed two and a half pounds as an adult, and then he gained a little weight um, as he got a little older, like he weighed over three pounds. Bear, he's eight years old now, and he's put on a little weight in his adult years too. It's okay, Bear Bear. <laughs> We all tend to slow down a bit. Anyway, he was four, four and a half pounds as an adult and um, he's about six and a half pounds now. Um, and he's eight years old. And baby weighs about five and a half pounds and Bo weighs about four and a half pounds. So they all have a different body type, different body structure, even though they're about the same size um, in length and height, um, their body mass is a little bit different. So number 10, um, another question that I ask breeders is, do you dock their tail and remove dew claws? And if so, when and how is that done? Um, this is a controversial subject and I might get brave enough to do a video on this topic. But what I'll say for now is to do your own research, decide how you feel about this and choose a breeder that works with what you want. Question 11. Are the puppy's parents AKC certified or is there another certification? If this is important to you, then you'll want to ask about the parents' papers. Um, many breeders show their dogs and pride themselves on the champion status of their line. And some breeders are of the mindset that no one should ever vary from the breed standard. Um, this is another controversial subject and maybe that's another video too. Like CKC um, is different, it's a different form of registration, but it's my understanding that it allows for mixes, not just purebred dogs. Um, I don't think it's as regulated as AKC. Anyway, I'm not going to focus on that subject right now, so you might like to do a little research, um, look up the difference between AKC and CKC um, to find out more about that. Anyway, um, question number 12, how long have you been breeding? Question number 13, do you have a contract that limits breeding rights um, or anything else I should know about? Like some breeders will um, have it in their contract that 
um, you can't have your dog be a stud dog or um, if you have a female that that you can't have breeding rights. Question number 14, do you have any references? It never hurts to talk to those people and ask what their experience is with that breeder. Question number 15, at what age do you let the puppies go to their new home? The norm for most dogs is eight to 10 weeks, but for small dogs like Yorkies, it's usually 10 to 12 weeks. The responsible breeder will be sure that the puppy stays with the mom until he's good and ready to go to his new home. Question number 16, are you able to deliver my puppy? And if so, is it transported with a pet nanny in the plane cabin or is it transported in the cargo? Although choosing a local breeder is ideal, you can still successfully get your puppy from a distant breeder if you do your homework. So I think a good breeder would be impressed by all your questions. Like I said, Teddy's breeder, she was not annoyed by all my questions and I really appreciated that because I had a lot of questions and you should have a lot of questions. Um, they are gonna want to know that you know, their puppy is going to a good home with new owners who will take excellent care of them. And if you're talking with a responsible breeder, they'll also have questions for you. So here are some examples of some questions like, do you have children um, or small children who visit you often? And be aware that if you're looking for a tiny dog like a Yorkie, toddlers and tiny dogs don't mix very well. If you do end up with a tiny dog and a baby or toddler at the same time, then you're gonna need to be really vigilant in your training and be sure your little dog is safe. And likewise, with big dogs, you're also gonna to want to train your dog and be the pack leader and make sure that you establish the rules, boundaries, and limitations for all the members of your family, including the dogs and the kids. Training is key, and this is an important topic for another video. There's just way too much to cover there. So another question that um, a breeder might ask you is, what do you do for a living and how much will your dog be home alone? Remember that dogs are pack animals and like people, they have a strong need to be with others in their pack. And if you aren't in a situation where you can give your dog um, opportunities to interact and exercise, then you are asking for behavioral issues to develop let alone creating a less than ideal situation for your dog. So be sure you have time to spend with your dog. They want to be a part of the pack, which means part of the family. And another question they might ask you is, how much have you learned about caring for a new dog, like grooming, feeding, health, and training? Learn as much as you can before calling breeders, and as you talk and ask questions, then you'll find out more things you'll want to research. A good breeder will be there for you not only before you purchase your puppy, but um, should be there for you throughout your dog's life. Reputable breeders will care about the dog and may even have it in their contract that, you know, if you couldn't care for your dog anymore, that um, you would give the dog back to the breeder. So you should feel comfortable with your breeder and um, know that you can call them with your questions. And with that said, please do your research though. Um, don't just rely on your breeder to answer every single question that you can find out yourself. And also know that the breeder will have um, her own opinion on things that may not be your opinion and that's okay. It's nice to do your own research and um, get varying opinions. There are more questions that your breeder might ask you, of course, but that's a start. It's typical for a breeder to ask for a $500 deposit to hold a puppy for you, maybe even before the puppies are born. Like with Teddy, we paid our deposit when Teddy's mom was in, actually in heat. Check out references and if you can, pay for your deposit with a credit card or some method that offers buyer protection. All breeds are priced differently and there's as much variety in the price as there are breeds. So expect a reputable breeder to charge in the thousands of dollars for a puppy. A lot of times people will criticize breeders for being in it for the money and some of them are. Um, you can usually tell the ones who are in it for the money by the way they answer your questions and by the way they work. A good breeder who cares will not only spend time um, answering your questions and educating, 
but also spend countless hours um, raising healthy, well-adjusted puppies. I don't think people realize the time, money, and energy that it takes to breed, whelp, and raise a puppy. So for a Yorkshire Terrier, you can expect to pay anywhere from one to three thousand dollars, um, and sometimes breeders will price their puppies like between three to eight thousand dollars if their puppies have certain highly sought after features. There's a particular look that's popular in a Yorkshire Terrier and there are some commonly used buzzwords that aren't necessarily in line with the breed standard. Um, breeders who show dogs take pride in the purity of their line and sometimes they get a bit irritated by people's um, buzzwords and desire to have some of these features. Like some of the buzzwords are teacup and um, that's not anything that's used in um, breed standards. Or tiny or baby doll face or a boxy or cobby body, smaller ears and a short snout and full silky hair. Some of those are breed standard. All Yorkies are black when they're puppies and you'll have to look at the parents to get an idea of the color that your puppy will be as an adult. Um, some people prefer the silver or blue color and there are variations of silver, tan, gold, black, and even um, some Yorkies that are black and white called party Yorkies. My three dogs are all really different. Bo has black silky hair and Bear has silver tan and wooly hair. <laughs> and Baby has light silver and tan, very fine hair. Look how thick your hair is. So you might be able to find um, Pet quality Yorkies being offered for prices as low as 800, but be wary of any Yorkie puppies you see for a really good deal, like four to $600, especially if it's tied with a sad story of why they can't keep the puppy. Those are scams and I heard several of those stories as I was looking for puppies and most of them have a similar theme that you'll start to recognize as you hear them a few times. So from a legal standpoint, whether you are getting a dog from a shelter or from a breeder, um, a dog is considered a purchase. I um, personally think that a pet is much more than a purchase because they're precious beings that become members of our family. But according to the law, they are considered property and initially it's true that it's a purchase and you are the buyer. Therefore, you have every right to get answers to all your questions, so don't let an opinionated breeder bully you into anything that you don't want. Since I'm making this video mostly for Teddy's Yorkie followers, I'll just add a reminder that getting a cute little pocket puppy is more than the fantasy of having an adorable little pocket puppy to dress up and carry around in a designer bag. Um, if you are thinking about getting a tiny dog, just um, keep a few things in mind. I mentioned a couple of them already, that little dogs and toddlers aren't the best mix. And for adults, little dogs sometimes get underfoot. And that's why in my house we have a no shoe rule. It really helps to not have shoes on when they get in the way a bit. And um, also, most people know that little dogs tend to get away with a lot of bad behavior. And the truth is that all the jokes about them being in charge and being spoiled rotten is actually not in the best interest of the owners or the dog. Dogs need responsible pack leaders who are in charge. And when your dog gets the idea that she needs to take charge or take that leadership role, then you're probably heading for unwanted behavior. Well, I've had so much to say about how to find a puppy that I almost forgot to tell you where to find a puppy. I usually spend months looking for the right match of a breeder um, I feel confident working with and also the timing of the parents that I like and when they'll be having puppies. So um, basically, if you just start searching on the internet where to find a Yorkie puppy, for example, or whatever breed you're looking for, there are sites that can help um, connect you with rescues for that particular breed, um, or sites where you can find a list of breeders like um, yorkieinfocenter.com, 
Um, and I can't personally vouch for any of these internet sites in particular, though, because I don't know how well regulated they are. Um, so just always be aware of potential scammers uh, who advertise on any of those sites. Also, as you talk with breeders, keep in mind that sometimes they need to um, retire a female or a male and they might want to rehome one of their adult dogs for a lower price than a puppy. And another thing I found in my research, like in Facebook, if you can search any breed by just typing in um, Maltese or Yorkie, and several sites come up that can potentially connect you to breeders with new owners. Um, one site that I found in Facebook is called Searching for Baby Doll Yorkies, and that's where I found my breeders for Baby and Bo. Um, you just need to ask to join and then you can post where you live and what you're looking for. Um, I found Bo from a breeder in Oklahoma and I found Baby from a breeder in San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, you're a Texas girl. And I, I hate to mention just one or two breeders though because um, there are a lot of good breeders out there with really cute dogs. Um, it's just a matter of talking with several breeders until you find the match that you're looking for. So thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel. I am going to keep doing videos on questions that I get from our Instagram followers on Teddy Bear Yorkies. And so I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.